Personal note is Stange is my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. Follow that train, another adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine... I need your help. And there are some things that I, I want most desperately. Well, what I want is the following. A green electric train with a real whistle and a blue and yellow observation car. A jump-up turtle that snaps at you. An atomic rocket gun M1 non-automatic. A yo-yo. And a pair of skates. Signed, Santa Claus. <laughs> Oh, now, wait a minute. What kind but of a game? that's the way the letter is signed, George. I suppose it's postmarked North Pole. Uh-huh. What? Well, I mean, the letter is inside. It's engraved with a picture of the North Pole and... Uh, uh-oh. In small print, it says, Local Branch Office, Gumpert's Department Store. Well, I'm right here, Brooksy. Oh, those shoppers. There must be millions of yeah, them. Yeah, hang on to me now. Watch the umbrella, lady. Oh, come on. Let's get out of here, Angel. It was nothing but a gag, the whole thing. Letter from Santa Claus. Publicity stunt, Oh, maybe. that's my oh. foot you're walking on, bud. Okay, Buster, but get those packages out of my... Hey! Riley! Well, <laughs> hello, hello, Miss Brooks. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Why are you here, Lieutenant, buying stockings for your wife? Uh, handkerchiefs this year. Uh, <laughs> No, no, it's the policeman's charity down at the orphanage. Say, uh, you coming? Yeah, I guess so. Oh, some of the stuff turned over to us was broken. Got to get a new motor on this thing, see? You mean people give toys for charity that aren't any good? Well, I grant you this item was... Uh, <laughs> well, you see, me and some of the boys were playing with it down at the office, and it uh, uh, broke. Hey, wait a minute. Electric train motor, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, and it's got the slickest blue and yellow observation car you ever saw. It's still on my desk. Sergeant Del Valle is fixing the wheel. Yeah, let me see the rest of that package. Huh? This hey, wait a minute. You'll mess up the wrappings. How should I hey, know? Sent it? Oh, it's just a box of new presents, that's all. Somebody just dumped it off at headquarters. It's nice stuff. George, the electric train. Huh? Jump up thing that's dressed like a turtle. Yeah. A- atomic rocket gun, yo yo, and a pair of skates. Yes, Angel, exactly the presents Santa Claus wants. Exactly huh? the things in the letter. <laughs> No, 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 no. You misunderstand. All those men you saw dressed in Santa Claus suits go outside. Yes, they work on the streets for blocks around collecting money for charity. You mean ringing a bell and saying, buy your gifts at Comforts? Well, people are used to commercials. But really, you know, sometimes even I don't know how many there are. The agency always seems to send one more than we need. Yes, but look, inside. Is there only one Santa Claus inside? Well, but of course. His name is Joe Smith, the most reliable young man. Uh, a young Santa Claus? Well, he looks the part, all right. Oh, he's the real one. He's been with us several years now. The children all believe in him. Well, then he's the guy we want to see. Uh, perhaps if you would tell me why we don't allow adults inside North Pole. You know, there's a fence around it, naturally. Please, I'm a busy uh, man. Here, here's my calling card. Yes, but... Oh, of course, Lieutenant. It's easier if you slip through the credit department here. This side door... Watch your step. That's supposed to be an ice floor. All right, all right, all right. I'll uh, I'll get the answer to this for you, Valentine. There's nothing to it. I'll just uh, open the... <laughs> what the... Oh, all right, little girl. You'll be next. Come on, come on. Oh, oh North Pole. Stupid. We couldn't get in there today. Well, I guess maybe we'd better shut the door. Uh, <clears throat> Valentine, maybe we got to forget. Riley, the, uh... let me have that package, would you? Huh? And you, what does this Joe Smith eat his lunch? Why, he eats at home, I believe. Uh-huh. 
And his address is 17 West Federal. That's near here. It's one of the side streets. Okay, thanks. Valentine, wait a minute. Those presents are... Riley, up. what would you do if you got a letter from Santa Claus? Well, I'll grant you I'm still curious myself, but... Okay, uh... you can have your electric train after lunch. Huh? Now, maybe this is crazy, but I don't want anybody disappointed at Christmas time. Especially St. Nick. <laughs> Your gifts at Gumbert's. Merry Christmas. 17 West. There it is, George, across the street. Yeah, the brownstone, huh? Boarding house, maybe. Hey, look at the signs in the window. You want a job? I'll find it. Let Louie place you. One-armed employment agency. Seasonal employment especially. George, maybe it's the place that hires all the Santa Clauses. Yeah, maybe. Only the guy said that's where Joe Smith lives. So, let's cut across here, Angel. All right. It's all right. I got the package. Fire gives it. Hey, look out for that taxi. Yeah. 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 Jump, Angel. Holy. Oh. oh. Boy, was that close. Yeah. Well, thanks for the warning, Santa. Ah. Uh. Fire Darling, look, the driver stopped. Why don't you watch where you jaywalk, Mac? Now, look, Buster, you might watch where you drive for a change. Oh, yeah, I seen you start gazing at the sun. Maybe it'll help you to get bumped once or twice. Vice versa, Buster. I can oblige you. Yeah, you and who else? Show him, boy. George, look out there! You look out! Bad enough a man should be a Samaritan. He shouldn't strain his heart doing it. No, no, Hilda. His feet on the couch, not under him. Yes, Mr. Louis. He might break his leg. You want he should sue us? No, Mr. Louis. Oh, my back. Yeah, there we are. Oh. Men my age carrying bums off hey. the street. Hey, where am I? It's Mr. Louis's house, sir. Louis's house. I'm the cook, Hilda, and I saw you lying out on the street. Louis's and... house. Oh. Oh, the employment agency. It won't do you any good to sew us. Well, this is where Santa... I mean, Joe Smith lives, isn't it? Oh, no, no, sir, <laughs> no. Joe Smith lives. That does it. I break my back like a Samaritan for instance. Uh, Joe Smith is my boyfriend, that's all, sir. I mean, he lives in a cheap little hotel, but this is a better address. Lives and... here, that's all I need, a worthless bum. Every time I turn my back, he's eating my meals. Every time I go out, he's sneaking in. Okay, okay, you don't like your cook's boyfriend, skip it. Hey, I was carrying a package. A package? <laughs> now he thinks we're stealing. What package? And wait a minute. Where is she? Where's Miss Brooks? Who? The girl. The girl who was with me out there on the street when some guys jumped us. Where is she? <laughs> you pick up a bum, what happens? How should we know? Here's a guy on the street, Hilda says. He's all alone. What girl? <laughs> So she's disappeared. Maybe even kidnapped. I'm just as worried as you are. Only will you please... Those guys jumped us. She's not maybe kidnapped, right? I've she... got every man on the force searching for her. What else can I do? Now, look, if you could only remember... I what... don't know what they look like. Just a taxi driver and some guys that happened too fast. Wait, uh, what about that Santa Claus you said saved you from getting run over? No, no, he was way across the street. Oh, yeah? Well, listen, I had a man check the people on the street, and he says there wasn't any Santa Claus there at all on the okay, street. Okay, okay, it's a riddle. I don't care. All I want is to find Brooksy. Valentine, will you please let us do the job we can do best? Will you please stay with that electric train and... Riley, you can take that electric train, and you know what you're... Look, do get smart, will you? It was stolen from you. That's why you were attacked. Only listen. Were the wires made of platinum? Was there a crown jewel in the headlight smuggled up on the yo-yo? No, no, me and the boys took every one of those toys apart down here at the office. They were just toys, that's all, toys, worth no more than 50 bucks. Okay, well, you figure it. Uh, okay, Riley. Gee, Mr. Valentine, I know how you feel. Me and Joe love each other so much, only we can't get married. He only works part-time, driving fruit trucks in the summer and, and being Santa in the winter. Mr. Louie won't pay me enough to support both of us. It's no fun being apart. Hilda, let's talk about something else, huh? The only times I see him is when the boss is out. But, gee, if a person thought you wouldn't ever see the other person again... Hilda, will you please... Please answer the door. That okay. might be Joe. Hey, you 
coast clear, honey? Uh-huh. Oh, Hilda, baby, Merry Christmas. Uh, Joe, oh. Joe, you whiskers. All right, all right, all right, break it up. I'm George Valentine. Oh, oh, well, how are you, Mr. Valentine? Say, isn't this a swell day, though? Yeah, sure. Now, you're the one who wrote me that letter. Why? Huh? Why did you write it? Santa Claus wants presents. What's the gag? Why those special toys you listed? Oh, it's no gag. They were stolen. Stolen? Well, from the North Pole, I mean, yesterday. Go on. Well, it all started yesterday, Mr. Valentine. A guy I used to know once bumped into me on my way to work. Uh, Mo Dickerson. He asked me could he take my place today as Santa Claus and wear my stuff. What, Joe? No, no, take it easy, honey. Of course, I said no. I thought it was just a rib. Until last night, I saw some of my toys were missing. And then I get a phone call saying unless I let Mo do what he asked, those toys wouldn't be returned. What's so important about that? Oh, well, if they weren't returned, I'd be in trouble. I'm responsible. Nobody's allowed in the North Pole except me and the kids. Not, not, not even store help. Oh, no, I'd be in trouble. Uh-huh. It was Mo's way of pressuring you into doing what he wanted. Only I wonder why he wanted to play Santa. And, Joe, if people can't get in there, how did he steal the toys? Well, gosh, I don't know. I don't know any of those things. I got the kids to think about, Mr. Valentine, and I wanted you to figure out... You don't know where Mo lives either, do you? No, I, I'm sorry. But he's a skinny guy with a sort of a nosy voice, you know, uh, brown hair and a mole on his ear. Well, and... Wait a minute. Eyebrows go up, a little scar on his cheek? Yeah, yeah, that's right. He drives a taxi, taxi. sometimes. Say, do you sure, know him? sure, I met that guy, and I'd like to meet him again. When was this changeover of his supposed to take place? Uh, today, after lunch. Okay, you're going to make that changeover, Joe. Only with me. <laughs> well, of course, little girl. A dolly will do everything your baby sister does. Don't you worry. Yeah. Oh, brother. How many kids are there in this town? All right, Sonny. All right. You're next. Don't push there. Well, now, there's a fine little fella. Up on my knee. That's it. Now, let's see. You wrote me a letter up at the real North Pole. I remember that. <laughs> but you know how those elves can mix up a man's desk. I brought you one. Hey, what's that, Sonny? You'll have to speak louder so Santa can hear what you uh, A letter. I brought it. Here. Hey, let's see your face, kid. Oh, oh, no, you don't. You got your mail. So long, sucker. Hey, wait a minute. Well, I'll be. I'm midget. Dear Santa Claus... You still got your chance to play ball, but open your mouth one inch wider and you'll find yourself stuffed up a chimney with a stocking around your neck. We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. Christmas shopping is usually a happy and exciting affair. But when you have to do a lot of heavy traffic driving all over town, it can get a little rough on your nerves. Rough on your car, too. That is, if you have the wrong kind of gasoline. For perfect traffic performance, just try Chevron Supreme gasoline. It's a premium quality gasoline that gives your car a fast start every time. No delays, no extra strain on your car's battery. Smoother, faster pickup, and ping-free power on hills. Best of all, Chevron Supreme is climate-tailored, tailored according to weather reports from your area. That's why this gasoline gets the best out of your car in any season in each different altitude and temperature zone of the West, wherever you drive. In fact, you can't buy a better gasoline for today's high-compression engines. So why not try a tank full of Chevron Supreme tomorrow? Ask for it at standard stations and at independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean... We take better care of your car. And now, back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. You receive a letter for help from Santa Claus. For a while, you even play Santa at the North Pole, local branch office, Gumpert's department store. But in the meantime, your assistant, Claire Brooks, has disappeared. She was kidnapped, and so far, the police haven't located either her or the man who was there at the time, Mo Dickerson. All this and a midget 
and a note threatening murder just because of a missing electric train and a few other inexpensive toys. Even if your name is George Valentine, you're thoroughly and completely stumped. But I don't know whose writing it is, Mr. Valentine. Well, it's addressed to you, isn't it, Joe? It says Santa Claus. And the midget couldn't have known it was Valentine under that makeup. <coughs> hey, hey, hey. You jiggle the mirror. Oh. <coughs> Burglar alarms, fire alarms, sewer pipes, wires. Is this the best comforts can give you for a dressing room? Well, the basement's better than a restroom. Oh. At least the other employees don't pull your beard all through a ten-minute break. Brother. Now, look, Joe. All I want to uh, know Mr. Valentine, is... of course the note was meant for me. Oh, would you give me those boots and the bell over there? Uh, if there's any danger in being Santa Claus, I'll take it. Oh, thanks. I'm not afraid of those guys. But what guys? I tell you, I don't know. Now listen, fat boy, somebody's in danger. Oh, Mr. Mr. Valentine, I'm sorry about her. I I do wish I could help. I know how I'd feel if Hilda were... I'll save the sympathy. Now that note said, open your mouth one inch wider and you'll find yourself stuffed up the chimney. Okay, let's have that inch. No. I mean, I told you what I can about Mo Dickerson. I did. Joe, it's about you. That's what you're not telling. Look, I've been doing all right for years, you see... It's only happened once, and it was a mistake. I'm honest. I drive trucks, and it's hard to get jobs sometimes. But I like kids, and I'm in love with a girl. I'm making a life for myself. Joe. Joe, what was it? That once. Jail. That's why I'm always so afraid of anything questionable happening again. Jail for what, Joe? Stealing. That's it. That's all there is to tell. Uh-huh. I hope the kids don't pummel you like they did. Me. Oh, oh I, I don't mind. I, I like the job. Valentine, wait a minute. Where are you going? To catch a thief who could have stolen an electric train. A small thief, Riley. A midget. Yeah. Yeah. Trick jobs, Louie. If you can't be very many of them in town, they ought to... Um, tall guys up for a water ski in Florida. You must... Uh, who, who is employment? Now, here, listen. I want a paycheck, so get over here. No. What's what? He's in a... Su- Take the next. Main 8409. The kid who gave me the note. And he must be down at the North Pole yesterday. Tell me who he is, then he can fuse the rest of the boys. Yeah, so yeah, we- yeah. It's a job for a radio announcer. Now. Hey, results. Somebody at the door. Something. I get a commission. Come on, go on. Why? Ah, oh, it's all right, small fry. Don't worry. Wait- Who's here? Brooksy. I want you to meet the most charming... Oh, but you are charming. <laughs> uh, my name is Felton. Uh, uh, look, Angel, you were kid on the sidewalk. When I came to, you weren't there. Not... Married man, Mr. Valentine. No, I... George, no. I took the electric train. There, and the next thing I knew, I was wondering... And there she was, Mr. Valentine. She fainted. Naturally, I... Naturally. George, he even took me to the emergency hospital. See my bandage? Oh, it's under my head. Mr. Felton, you and who else revived her? Tom and Jerry? I beg your pardon. My darling, once a year, a little nutmeg won't hurt anybody. Oh, George. Oh, hey, Come on, Angel. You should have stayed in that hospital. Hilda! Hilda, where are you? Oh, here I am, Mr. Valentine. She can lie down on my bed. I'll take her. Oh, you poor thing. I'll go with you. Oh, great. Well, I guess I ought to be grateful to you, Wolf. Yeah. I, I'm sorry you were so alarmed. So were the police. Oh, dear. And me, a married man. Uh, Mr. Valentine, perhaps if there's no further way I could be of assistance... No, hold in. Hey, is this the place phone to butter? Hello, sucker. Let Urgh. go of me. Put me down, you big boy. Try it on. Mo. Oh, good heavens. Hey, What's Mo. going on? What's Help. this? What's Who? What, what is this all about? I... Mr. Oh, Felton, hey. here's your chance to Let make go. up. Hold this half point. Hey, hey, now. Hey, really, hey, hey, hey. now. What's the matter? Wait, Lee, I... Come well, Mo, welcome to the party. Hey. Mr. Valentine, really? Oh, stop kicking me, will you? Yeah, things happen pretty fast, Mr. Felton. I guess you can put the little man down now. He's not going anyplace. What's the meaning of all this? What is it? Shoplifting, I figure. A big guy here used a little guy to try and pressure a Santa Claus. Wanted to borrow a red suit for the afternoon so he could get into gumpets unnoticed and fill his stomach full of mink coats or something, I suppose. Yes. Only what I don't... Yes, uh, really, Mr. Valentine, that scarcely makes sense. But then, I suppose, neither will this. Hey, boy. Nice going, boss. <laughs> Thank you, Wiggly. Thank you. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so I am a sucker. What are you going to do about it, Mr. Felton? Yes, and, and why do you need me? I, I should be cooking supper or, or be upstairs with Miss Brooks. Oh, or... stop sniveling, Hilda. They're not going to hurt us. Bombs, that's all. Of course, of course, no one will be hurt. No, nah, no, we don't hurt people. Ha-ha. <laughs> <laughs> Ha-ha. Quite a convention you got on your hands, Felton. 7.53, boss. Plenty of time, Mo. Uh, relax, Wiggly. Listen to the music. Yeah, you're a big wheel, Felton. That's where I went wrong, figuring it was just shoplifting, isn't it? Just shoplifting would scarcely make sense with all the effort you guys put out over that electric train. Well, I assumed you'd come to your senses, Valentine. Naturally, I had to detain you. I could fix it so he loses those senses again, boss. Don't be so anxious, Mo. But you did want to play Santa Claus. And you keep watching the clock. Something slated for tonight, isn't it? Sure, sure, that's it. At closing time, the guy playing Santa Claus would go down to the basement to take off his makeup. He'd be there late. And the burglar alarm wires are down there. Boss, he talks too much. Why, your gifts at Gumpert's. That place must take in close to 100000 bucks a day this time of year and can't bank till next morning. Well, you've got a big organization, all right. The man inside the basement blocks the alarm system. The rest of the team goes to work. It's robbery. Big time organized robbery. I know it. Bums, that's all they are. Oh, shut up, Louie. You're in it yourself. What the? Yeah, you guys sit around acting like you don't know each other. Well, who hires people? Who know about that basement dressing room? And why do you think I wanted you to phone midgets today? It was to see if the right midget would take orders from you, Louie, and he did. He came running. And the crankpot way you and Felton picked Miss Brooks and me up after Mo and the boys slugged us. Mr. It... Louie, no. Oh, no, Mr. Louie, Shall no. Shall I kick him into shins for you, boss? Turn that blasted radio off. Mo, you and Wiggly run down to Fred's garage. Pick up a car. Get back here fast. Sure, Louie. Yeah, Louie. Now, 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 cool off, Louie. You've got a bad heart. There's no need. Louie, Smoey, shut up. All day you've been botching. I have not. Just a bit of bad luck. Picking that dame Brooks off the sidewalk. But the boys had hit her too hard. They'd hurt her head. It only seemed decent to... Uh, well, she didn't know what happened, Louie. And, and you yourself brought in Valentine. Samaritans, bums, you and dumb Hilda. I didn't know, Mr. Louie. I, I just saw him lying there. I didn't know you were a criminal. You didn't know nothing. You never do. But you do now. Too much. Yeah, and so do I. Now, you listen, Buster. I finally figured out the electric train, why it's important. It starts out on the North Pole. It was stolen from there. So smart. Only instead of dumping it in an ash can, Felton, you go soft-headed and put it in a charity box where a cop can get hold of it and play around with it in his office, can give it to me. Yeah. Yeah, now I know why it's so important, why you had to have the boy slug me to get it back again. The world is full of bombs. Fingerprints. Sure, Fingerprints. There's nobody can resist playing with an electric train. Go ahead, make noises while you can. Now, now, wait a minute, Louis. Of course I'm going to kill him. So I work with bombs. So a big-time robbery gets botched up. I get rid of him, I can still pull it. So I ain't got the burglar alarms fixed. I can still... There's a do blue and yellow observation car, Buster. What? You've got that electric train back, all right, but there's a blue and yellow observation car still on my friend Lieutenant Riley's desk. I've already told him to check it. Every big baby in your gang has probably had his mitts on it. Well, a complete fingerprint roundup is going to make your robbery a little risky, isn't it? It might even make killing me a little risky, too. He's right, Louis. Uh, they'd know who to look for afterwards. You see, it's not practical anymore for Shut us. Shut up, you sissy! What? You botched it up, some Samaritan, playing with toys, turning soft, all of a sudden afraid to take a bump for a ride. Oh, I am not a sissy. But for gosh sakes, don't you realize... Well, it's Christmas. Yeah. And that's Riley. <laughs> you might as well face it, Louis. You'll have to buy your gifts at Gumpert's. Get away from that phone, Valentine. Hilda! Hilda, stop twisting that handkerchief and answer it. Y yes, sir. My prints ain't on file, Valentine, and they ain't on no toys either. <laughs> Not me. Just say Louis ain't here, Hilda. Just that. Yes, sir. Uh, hello? I'm sorry, but Mr. Louie isn't here. <laughs> Christmas. Schmissmas. All right, Scrooge. It looks like it's your party. 
Yeah, there's your boys out there. It's an awful black car. Stand still, Felt. You too, Hilda. In case you got any Rose Bowl tickets you want to get rid of, Valentine. Oh, shut up. Let them in. Let's get going. All right, Mo. Come on. Merry Christmas, baby. Merry... Joe! Uh, what are you talking Get him, Joe! Gee, Mr. Valentine, you knew all the time it would be me on that telephone. Boy, I came tearing. Ooh, the only times I can see her when she tells me that old bum Louie isn't there. Oh, it's lucky that other Santa Claus told me to phone the minute I got off work. George, at least you'll admit it was lucky that Joe should telephone the minute he got off work at 8 o'clock. Well, I hope that was Joe on the phone. That's why I tried to keep Louie mad, keep him from looking out the window to see who was really coming. Oh. But what about that other time when the Santa Claus practically saved our lives? When that taxi almost ran us down? Yeah, the one who warned us. Lieutenant Riley said there wasn't a Santa Claus on that street. Uh-huh. And in the store, who suggested Joe telephone? There isn't any other Santa Claus inside the store. It's only outside. George, who was it? Well, what's the matter with you, Angel? Don't you believe in Santa Claus? It won't be long now before we celebrate the holiday that is probably everybody's favorite. Stockings will be hung, old Kris Kringle will be stopping on every rooftop, and on Christmas Day there will be happy family gatherings. So right now we want to wish you the happiest and brightest Christmas season you've ever known. A merry, merry Christmas to you from all of us here in the studio and from the sponsors of Let George Do It, Standard Oil Company of California. Incidentally, this is the fourth Christmas season we've been on the air with you. And once again, independent Chevron dealers and Standard Stations personnel also want to sing out to you, Merry Christmas, have a happy week, a happy holiday, and we'll be seeing you next Monday night. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and Standard Stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis. Virginia Gregg appeared as Brooksy, Wally Mayer as Lieutenant Riley. Larry Dobkin was heard as the executive, John Daner as Joe, Herb Butterfield as Louie, Virginia Eiler as Hilda, Junius Matthews as Felton, and Tony Boris as the midget. The music was composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.